Welcome everyone to our June 19th weekly webinar, Digging Into Tuition and Fees. Like I said before we got started, um, I'm Rachel Cox. I am joined today by Jody Shaw, and we have a really fun kind of setup. Uh, usually we are in separate locations giving these webinars together, but Jody and I are actually able to sit side by side today as we prepare for our summer conference in Ankeny, Iowa tomorrow. Um, Jody, do you want to introduce yourself? I am Jody Schott. I am from the Brainerd Lakes area, and I've been with JMC for about two years. I am on the forums team, and I also do the new school onboarding. Great. Thanks, Jody. We will dive right in. JMC makes taking care of payments a breeze. Today, we'll walk you through initializing fee contacts, in-school purchases, and managing your fees in JMC office. Learn how to use fee accounts to group all fees associated with the same bank account, helping you track totals. Curious what online payments, what the online payment process looks like? We are going to cover that too. Uh, if you have any questions as we work our way through this webinar, go ahead and put them in the chat feature. Uh, we will get to those questions at the end of each section in the webinar. We will start with uh, discussing creating family fee accounts. JMC Office allows users to initialize a student's first primary contact as their fee contact, bringing all siblings together into one family fee account. Creating family fee accounts makes it easy to apply fees for all members of a family on a single page. Use the initialize family fee contacts feature in the tuition and fees module to save yourself time by automatically attaching fee contacts to all members of a family with the click of a button. To place every student in a family fee account, head to tuition and fees, data, initialize family fee contacts to assign them a fee contact. Step one, click the create fee contacts button to begin the process of creating a fee contact for all students who do not have one. Fun fact, if a student has more than one primary contact designated, this process will use the first primary contact listed to create the fee contact. If a student does not have a primary contact designated, then this process will not generate a fee contact for that student. The next step, click the OK button on the pop-up alert to confirm that you would like to create fee contacts for students that do not have one, or you can click the cancel button to exit. Uh, fun fact, once the process is completed, a message will appear indicating the number of fee contacts generated. These can be verified by searching the student's contact on the View Student Data page and locating the fee contact in the drop-down list. So let's go ahead and take a live look at creating family fee accounts. Oh, I maximized the wrong page, sorry. Here we go. Okay, so from your JMC office homepage, you're gonna find your tuition and fees here, and you're gonna go to data, and all the way down at the bottom, you have initialize family fee contacts. And this is the easiest step in the whole process. All you have to do is click one button, asks you if you want, are sure you want to create uh, fee contacts for these students that don't have one. You click okay, it just takes a minute, and then you can see here 20 new fee, fee contacts were created and it lists the, the contact and then it lists the students that they're associated with. So if you ever have an issue where you're trying to um, assign a fee to a family and you can't seem to find them, it's because they don't have a, a, a fee, a, a family fee contact set up. So go in here, click this button, create those fee contacts, and then you can start assigning fees. All right, do we have any questions about creating fee contacts? There are no questions. All right. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, just one simple step. All right, we'll talk about working with fees next. We'll start with creating fee accounts. Streamline your chargeable fees by organizing them into fee accounts in JMC's tuition and fees module. Create a distinct fee account for each district bank account or department, and then assign each fee to the relevant fee account. As fees are charged and paid in JMC office, JMC office provides reports with subtotals for each fee account, giving you a quick access to the total amounts per bank account. So to set up your fee accounts, you log into JMC office at the district level. So a lot of the time when you're working with tuition and fees, a lot of those processes are done at the district level. And then you navigate to tuition and fees, data, fee accounts. So the first step, click the add fee account button to add a new fee account, or you can click the edit button next to an existing account to modify the account name or code. And as you can see there, um, right here, you can even delete a fee account if you, if you no longer use it. Next, you want to name your fee account in the um, fee account name field to 
to give it an easy name for tracking for your business office. Um, step three, enter a code in the fee account code field to provide a reference to the bank account or the fund associated with the fee account. A helpful tip, coordinate setting up fee accounts with the business office to agree upon a list of the accounts that work best for your school. Step four, click the update button to record the account name and account code or click the cancel button to discard those changes. Uh, and then we'll look at creating fees. So you have the fee account, and now we'll look at the individual fees that would um, fall underneath those accounts. Fees are expenses that students or families are responsible for, including items like tuition, lab fees, sporting apparel, or yearbooks. By creating fees in JMC tuition and fee in the tuition and fees module, you can define all your school's fees in one central location before assigning them to the correct students and families. Use the tuition and fees module in JMC office to easily create fees and track payments throughout the school year. So you log into JMC office again at the district level, go to tuition and fees, data, edit fees to define the charge, its price. You can even add a photo and some other things that we'll get into. Uh, step one, click the add record button to add a new fee or click the edit link next to a fee in the list to edit an existing fee. And um, just like with those fee accounts, you can even delete fees that you don't use anymore. Step two, enter the name of the fee in the fee name field to define it. And then step three is enter the various fee costs uh, in the cost, reduce cost, and free cost field. So it's kind of hard to see here. This is this is a wider screen, so I could only get that first field here, but you have the cost. And then when we get into the live look, I'll show you that we've got the reduced cost and free cost. So you set up those costs based on students um, free or reduced meal benefits. Step four, select the fee account from the account drop down list to assign the fee to a specific fee account for record keeping and reporting purposes. And then step five, here's a couple of optional steps. You can, um, you can choose to uh, make this item purchasable in JMC Family by putting a check mark here in the family store, um, or else you've got the general store which where community members can purchase these items from the general store. Step six, optional again, you can place a check mark in the auto pay checkbox to allow families to set up recurring payments for the selected fee. Um, helpful tip, enable auto pay for those larger fees like tuition, which would allow families to break the payments into smaller increments. So if you put a check mark here in the auto pay um, checkbox, when families log in on the family side, if they choose those recurring payments, then they can choose how to break it down. If they wanna pay it over nine months, over 12 months, however that is, whatever your school agrees upon, then they can break those larger payments up into smaller pieces. Step seven, you can click the upload image button if you want to include an image to go along with the fee. So if you um, click the upload image button, uh, you begin uploading an image from your computer into JMC office, you select the image that you wanna upload and then click the open button to continue uploading it to JMC office. Step eight, again, an optional step. You can enter a description in the item description field to provide additional information regarding that item. And you can add a little pizzazz to your message by using those formatting tools. Step nine, click the save button to save your changes or the cancel button to discard them. And then you can print a list of these fees if you want to. You've got that print button up at the top and it would give you a list of all the fees that you have. Helpful tip, change the order in which the fees are displayed in JMC Office and JMC Family by clicking and dragging the name of the fee to a new position on the list. So I'm just going to go back here. You would just grab one of these fees and move it up or down wherever you wanted it to appear in your list of fees. All right, so let's take a live look at working with fees. Okay, I'm going to start again from the home page. I'm going to come to tuition and fees data and we'll start with fee accounts and we have to log into the district level so if you forget to do that if you're working in the building level you get this alert telling you you need to log into the district to make changes so i'm going to log in at the district level and here you can see i've got a list of my fee accounts so i can add another fee account or i can edit one that i already have but if i go here click add a fee fee account name we can do drama club that sounds great uh, fee account number um, this is where you work with that business office you decide what is going to be a good fee account number that would help them track um, the, the fees that are coming in you know where they need to uh, how they need to deposit it how they need to use that for bookkeeping so i'm going to put 900 in there i'm going to click update and there we go so if i 
realized I'd maybe made a duplicate or there was a fee account that we're not using anymore, you can delete it if you want to or edit to make any changes. So those are your fee accounts, the larger overall accounts. And now we're going to move into how you make those individual fees that fall under your fee accounts. So again, from tuition and fees, data, now we're going to come to edit fees. And I've got a big list of fees here. Um, I can, again, I can edit a fee that already exists or I could create a new fee. Uh, we'll just work here in this 10th grade biology fee. You give it a name um, and we've got an account name here too. Oh, I'm sorry. These are the, these are the columns that come, come down. I'm gonna actually collapse this for just a second. So name, this, these are the names of all of your fees. You've got your account name here and family store. So this bar across the top is really just defining the columns all the way down. So I'm gonna come back here and, and hit edit. I can change the fee name here. I can change the cost. So this is what I said I would show you here in the live look. The cost, this it would be um, like the full cost of the item. And then this would be the cost that students who qualify for reduced meal benefits would pay or free benefits would pay this cost. So you set those costs up um, for what works best for your school. And then you have the account drop down list. So here are all those fee accounts that we made. So this biology fee, what fee account uh, would it fit under the best and here we've got lab fees i'm going to leave it there they could purchase this uh, families could purchase this in the family store you could put it on the general store uh, but if this was a larger fee like a tuition fee something that was you know maybe a couple thousand dollars and you wanted families to be able to pay over time then you can uh, put a check mark in this auto pay checkbox and then families can choose how to split up those payments and you can see you've got some little helper text there um, that tells you what that box does you could upload an image if you wanted to to help uh, maybe better define what that fee is and then you could add any uh, detailed descriptions in this item description box once you have the fee set up the way you want it go ahead and hit save and then you are ready to charge that fee to students or families and that's kind of it for setting up fees do we have any questions about fees jody we do not okay Well, then we will move on and we will look at how you go ahead then and start charging those fees to student or family accounts. Uh, we'll start with bulk loading charges. JMC's bulk load charges or bulk load credits feature in the tuition and fees module perform or transforms the task of assigning fees or credits to students. Rather than inputting these individual individually, this tool empowers you to apply charges or credits to entire groups of students at once, whether it's a class, a grade level, or a school activity group. This feature dramatically saves time, reducing what could take hours into a task completed within minutes. Whether it's assigning lab fees to biology students or locker fees to a sports team, the bulk loading uh, capability significantly enhances efficiency. And this was a feature that I would use a lot, um, even if it was a fee that applied to you know, 99 out of 100 kids, I would bulk load those fees to an entire grade, and then I could just remove it from the one person that it didn't apply to. So this, uh, this feature will save you a lot of time if you have fees, the same fee that's being charged to a, a large group of students. So to start, um, you go to JMC office, tuition and fees, data, bulk load charges or credits. Step one, select a radio button from the type box to identify if you are gonna bulk load a charge or a credit. Step two, select the appropriate radio button from the bulk load buy box to determine the group of students who will receive the charge or the credit. So the ways that you can uh, bulk load charges, you can do that by grade. So assign a fee to every student in a particular grade level, uh, to a course that contains a fee, to an activity or to course sections. Step three, filter and specify the group of students who will be charged or credited based on the selection you made in step two. So if you choose grade activity or course sections in step two, then you have a, uh, a drop down, uh, I'm sorry, not a drop down list, uh, a drop down list for grades. You, know, you do have a drop down list. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confusing myself here. So like if you uh, select grade, then you would use your drop down list right here to select the grade level that you would be um, applying those charges or credits to. If you selected course sections and want to assign fees to multiple course sections simultaneously, you can select multiple course sections from the available courses drop down list. Step four, you select a fee from the fees list to assign a fee to the selected students, or you can hold your controller command key to select multiple fees at a time. So once you have 
um, selected how you want to bulk load, uh, refined that uh, that first uh, selection that you made, then you get a list of fees. You can select one or more fees that you're going to bulk load to that group of students that you chose. And then you have a charge date here. So you can go in there and enter a specific date to associate the with the fee. Step six, and this one is optional, you can also assign a due date. So if there's a date that you want those fees to be uh, paid by, you can go ahead and put a due date in that box. And step seven, you can enter a comment in the comment field to provide further information or instructions about that charge or that credit. Step eight, click the load charges button to charge or credit the selected fees to each of the selected students. And fun fact, once the bulk load process is finished, you'll receive a message notifying you of the total number of charges or credits that were successfully applied. So you can see right down here, once you load charges, you would see how many students that um, the charges have been uh, applied to. And you can kind of double check that like, oh, that makes sense. We've got about 28 students in 10th grade and and you can just double check that the the fees were charged correctly with with this little alert that you get so that's how you bulk load fees now we'll look at um, charging fees to individual students or family accounts after creating fees in the tuition and fees module you're ready to begin assigning students and families fees in jamesy office Easily charge fees for students or families, including a date, an amount, an associated course, a due date, and any additional comments to begin keeping track of what a student or family owes. So to begin charging fees to a student or family, head to tuition and fees data, and then you choose either edit student fee data or edit family or organization fee data. Um, I would recommend using this, the family fee data. That makes it a little bit easier to track in JMC family. Uh, all of the students associated with the primary contact, then all the fees kind of show up in one place and you can still see which of your kids they would be assigned to, but it's a little bit easier to manage on the family side. And I think it's a little bit easier to manage on, on the office side too, because um, then everything is on one screen. So if you're, if you're here in the you know edit family fee data, I'm going to be able to charge fees to any of these students without having to go you know, student by student and find each one. So it's up to you to decide what works best for your school, um, but that's just a, a helpful tip there. Uh, step two, you wanna click the charge button to begin charging a fee to the student or family fee account. Then you enter the date for the charge in the charge date field, or you can click the calendar icon, um, but also the, the current date would, would um, appear there. It would automatically populate for you. So once you click that charge button, um, it's going to give you the date that you uh, are working on the charge. Will It'll populate in that field. Helpful tip, when charging a fee to a family or organization, select a student from the student dropdown list to associate a fee with a specific student. So again, if you're working on that family screen, you'd click your charge, um, you'd have your charge date here, but then which, which student in the family is the fee going to be associated with? So you want to select that student. And then once you've selected the student, you can come up here to the charge and you can use this uh, drop down list to find the fee that you want to charge to that specific uh, student in that family. Step five, enter a date in the due date field or simply click the calendar icon to assign a, a deadline for the payment. So that one does not automatically populate like the charge date is. So if you want families to be aware of a due date, go ahead and put a date in there. Step six, enter a dollar amount, excluding the dollar sign, no need to put that in there, in the amount or over, amount override field if the amount is not predefined or if it's different from the displayed charge. Um, so if you have something like um, after school care fees, this was what our, our school would have. It was different for each family, depending on how many times that a kid was at after school care. So that's something that I would have to override every time I charge that because it was different for each family. Step seven, select a course from the course drop-down list if the fee is associated with a specific course. Step eight, enter notes in the comment field to record any additional information about the fee being charged or for future reference. Step nine, click the OK button to charge the selected student or family the fee or click the close button to exit without charging the fee. Helpful tip, avoid charging fees to students until free and reduced lunch statuses are established to ensure fee costs reflect accurate free or reduced status. So you saw where you enter in those free or reduced costs. Um, you, wanna, you wanna wait until you have uh, families uh, applying for free and reduced benefits because you wanna make sure that they're being charged the right rate for each of those fees. 
So we can take a live look here at charging uh, fees to student or family accounts. Okay, I'm gonna come back to my homepage. I'm gonna come to tuition and fees data. Um, we're gonna start here with bulk loading charges or credits. Okay, so here um, you need to import your fee account balances for a prior year before running this process. So as you're working in the next school year, you wanna make sure that you've imported fee account balances from the prior year. Um, and we're maybe running this webinar maybe a little bit early because that's something that you can do after July 1st um, as the, the fiscal year rolls over. So to finish this step, I'm actually gonna go back into the previous year just so I can walk you through it. I am going to apply a charge. I'm gonna bulk load by grade. But now you notice I don't have all of those um, options that I had before. That's because I'm at the district level. So if I go to the uh, building level, now you see I can, I can associate the charge with the activity that is specific to this building or course sections that are also specific to this building. So you wanna make sure for this part of it, you're at the building level if you wanna have all of those options to bulk load your charges. So I'm gonna stick with grade. I am going to choose uh, 10th grade. We've got 10th grade biology, um, but I think we've already charged that fee to them. I don't know that we need to charge it again. I'll come down here to art supplies. Everybody in 10th grade is going to take art this year. Um, so the charge date, as you can see, uh, today's date automatically populates. I could choose a due date if I wanted to. I could come to the calendar picker and, and choose a date that way. If I had any additional comments, um, I can say that all 10th graders are taking art. Uh, so any additional details about the charge uh, you can put here in the comment field and then once i click load charges you'll see 28 charges have been loaded so that's just that way that you can double check that the number of 10th graders equals the number uh, of charges that have been made so that's how you bulk load charges um, maybe i'll just take a quick pause are there any questions about bulk loading charges and if not then we can move on to individually charging um there is can you bulk load a monthly fee for the year, such as a preschool tuition, or would it need to be bulked, bulk load monthly? Um, that's a great question. So I may, I might need uh, some follow up information. So uh, that's a, I would do this for my preschoolers at my building. Um, I typically did load it for the whole year. So you would go in and up to you again, how your business office works we would kind of figure out what that monthly charge was for the whole year and we would we would bulk load out the whole year and families could pay it monthly so you can do that or you could bulk load that monthly fee nine times and you could put the in the comment you know like uh september tuition uh october and so on and so forth so it, it would be up to you how you want it to look on family statements and does that answer the question we'll see if, if you got a follow up question to that, or if my answer wasn't clear, uh, let us know. Okay, uh, we'll move on to uh, charging individual students or families. And then we'll check back in to see if there is a follow up to that bulk loading question. All right, so to charge individual students or families, again, I'm in tuition and fees data, and I'm going to edit the family fee data. So you choose a family that you want to apply those charges to you can see here's all the students that are associated with this fee contact and we initialize those fee contacts that was step one um, i'm actually going to switch back to the current year here okay so i'm going to click that charge button and then i get this this pop-up here uh today's date automatically loads then the first thing i want to do if i'm charging to a family is i want to pick the student that uh, is being charged this fee. So I'm going to pick John. And now I have all of the fees that I've already created. It makes it really simple. So I'm going to charge art supplies. And if 
for some reason, John was paying a different amount than this $25, I could write in an override amount. Otherwise, the, the fee price that we set up when we set up this fee, that's what will be charged to the student. I can enter a due date if I'd like to or leave it blank. And if this was associated with a course, like it probably would be associated with art, you could find that course here in this list. Any additional details that I'd like to add, I can put right here. And then once I hit OK, you can see the charge shows up on this family account. So you can you can edit some details here. You can delete the charge if you want to. You can even email um, email that invoice right to the family. So I've got the charge here. You can see the amount, the balance, and then overall you can see the balance that, that this family owes. So that is how you charge fees to a family. If you wanted to charge individually to a student, the process is the same. It just looks a little bit different because you just have the um, the student name here and it would just be associated with this student. You, you don't have to select um, the member of the family. Do we have any questions about uh, charging fees to students or families or anything else on bulk loading charges? We don't have any questions, but when I was at my school, there were times where I would forget to pick that student and that miscellaneous would just show up. So if you all of a sudden they're like, the fee's not tied to it, that is why. That's a great point. Yes, that was always <laughs> my biggest frustration too. So if you actually, if you, if you choose the fee first, and then you choose the student, you'll see this defaults back to miscellaneous fee. So choose your student first and then choose your fee and then it, it will charge correctly. Thanks for bringing that up, Jody. Okay, and if we don't have any questions, so we've talked about charges and now we'll talk about payments. So entering your payments in JMC office. Making fee account payments in JMC Office is a seamless process facilitated by the tuition fees module. With the ability to create payment transactions, administrators can accurately track money coming into fee accounts, whether it's cash, check, or credit payments. The system provides the necessary tools to log payments with precision. By entering payments in student or family accounts, accurate account balances are reflected and comprehensive payment reports can be generated. To initiate a payment in the tuition and fees module, you can navigate to either tuition and fees data edit student fee data to allocate those funds to a specific student or tuition and fees data edit family fee data to designate funds for an entire family. So step one, just like we, we do for um, applying those charges, you enter a student or family fee contact name in the find field to apply that payment to their account. Step two, click the payment button this time to begin recording a payment to the student or family fee account. Next, you wanna select the payment type. So you select whether it's cash, check, or, uh, or if you're gonna apply a credit to their account. So you, you pick that payment type. Helpful tip, when making a payment using a check, remember to enter the check number in the check number field for future reference. And actually, if you forget to put the check number in and try to apply the payment, it won't, it won't let you. It'll tell you you've gotta go back and put a check number, or yeah, a check number in that field. Um, step four, enter the date for the payment in the payment date field, or simply click the calendar icon to record the date the payment was made to the account. And again, this will auto populate to the, to the current date that you're working on this. Helpful tip, if no date is entered, the payment date field in the payment transaction will automatically populate with the current date. So I kind of jumped the gun on that one, but, but that is how that would work. Step five, enter the dollar amount in the payment amount field without including the dollar sign to record the payment amount received. Then you wanna choose the uh, balance or fee radio button in the payment type box to indicate how, payment should, how a payment should be applied. If selecting fee, select the specific fee from the student fees list to allocate the payment accordingly. So uh, I would highly recommend choosing fee, if you've gone to all of the trouble of setting up your fee accounts and all and your fees, um, if you choose payment by fee, then that's going to just help your reports be more detailed. That will uh, um, show how much money has been deposited into each like fee type and fee account. So um, by fee is going to give you a little bit more detailed payment and charging information. Step seven, enter any additional information about the transaction for future reference by entering notes in the comment field. Then you wanna click o the okay button to submit the payment or click the close button to cancel the payment. So we can take a live look here at entering fees in JMC office. Okay, so once again, just to remind y'all we're at tuition and fees, 
data. And I'm going to be here on fam, edit family fee data. So same screen, but now instead of clicking that charge button, I'm going to click the payment button. So again, pick the, the payment type. So cash, check, or if you're applying a credit to this family account. So I'm going to stick with check. That's how a lot of the payments would come into the office. Uh, pick a check number or enter in a check number there and then payment amount. So let's say this family came in, gave me a $50 check. So my payment amount is $50 and we're gonna apply it to a fee. So we have a baseball fee here, but we also have this art supply fee. So I'm gonna hit command or control and then click that other fee. I can make any comments if I want to. And once I click okay, we can see that uh, we've got a check. The check one, two, three, four was for $50 and it, and it was applied to a baseball fee and art supply fee. So we had the charges for those fees here. We can see our payments right here. We see the overall check. We see the fees that it goes to, and we can see that our family now has a zero balance. Um, do we have any questions, Jody, about applying payments to an account? We do not have any questions. Okay. Then we will keep on moving and we'll look at managing tuition and fees in JMC family. So now we, we've taken kind of a deep dive into how you apply fees, how you apply payments on the office side. So we'll take a look at what it looks like for families. Viewing student fees. With JMC Family, you can conveniently view and pay the fees assigned to your kiddo. Once fees have been assigned by the school, JMC Family provides a user-friendly interface where you can easily access and review all fees on a single page. This includes a comprehensive history of charged fees, displayed, displaying descriptions, item costs, and a running account balance. If your district has the online payment module, you can even make purchases and pay the fees conveniently online. So to view your kiddo's fees, you would log into JMC Family, head to tuition and fees, and then uh, step one is select the desired student from the fee students drop down list to view the fees associated with them. Um, so this is kind of the, the difference that I was talking about when we were talking about um, individually applying student fees or fees to the family. So this box right up here, this is how it looks for families if you apply those fees to a family fee account. Otherwise, if they're uh, applied individually to students, you come down here and you would pick one of your kids and then you would see their charges, then you'd pick the next kid and, and their charges and so on. So that's the difference in how it would look on the family side. And a helpful tip, the fees are charged to your the fees charged to your student are organized chronologically by date and include a description as well as the amount owed. If your school has established a family fee account, um, then that's what I was just saying. All of those fees are going to show right up here at the top section of the page. To export the list of fees along with their corresponding details, such as amounts, you can click the Excel or PDF icons located at the top right of the fee list. Okay, well, we'll move on to purchasing items. So you view the fees, and then if you want to purchase those family store items. Families can conveniently view and purchase school-related items for their students, such as sports banquet dinners or class yearbooks. They can select desired items listed by the school and make purchases from the comfort of their home using credit cards or ACH transfers for, pay, uh, for payment with the added option to store payment methods for future use. So to access the list of items available for purchase, simply log into your JMC family account and navigate to the tuition and fees section. Click the purchase items button to view the items available for purchase. So you just click that button right there. Next, you would want to click the add to cart button to associate associated with the desired item to add that item to your cart for purchase. Then you want to click the checkout button to open the payment screen and complete your purchase or click the close button to exit. Uh, fun fact, please note that in order to make payments online, your district must have the online payment module configured and enabled. So uh, you want to make sure that's set up if you want to allow online payments. This module enables the functionality to securely process payments online, ensuring a convenient and streamlined payment experience. So I'll show you now how making those online payments in JMC Family looks. If your district takes advantage of JMC's online payment module, you no longer need to head to the school or staple checks to your students' homework to pay for school tuition or fees. Make payments directly from the JMC family portal. View your current balance and review charges and payments for the entire family or individual students. Even pay your bill by using credit card or directly from your bank account. To begin making payments by logging into JMC family, oh, you 
begin by logging into JMC Family and go to tuition and fees. Step one, click the pay my bill button to make a payment toward your family balance or pay a fee associated with one of your students. Step two, select a radio button from the payment type box to identify whether you're paying toward the balance or paying a specific fee, then follow the steps below. So if you're paying toward the balance, the entire amount of the payment, uh, enter the entire amount of the payment in the payment amount field and click the okay button. Or if you're paying a specific fee, select the fees from the student fees box and click the okay button. Step three, enter your first name and last name in the appropriate full name fields to identify you as the account owner. Helpful tip, click the saved account dropdown list to select an account that's been saved from a previous purchase and save the hassle of re-entering your payment information. Step four, click the credit card tab to make a credit card payment or click the bank account tab to make an ACH payment. Next, you wanna enter your credit card number, expiration date, credit and credit card security code in the appropriate fields to make a credit card payment or enter your bank account number, routing number and select checking or savings from the account type dropdown list to make an ACH payment. Step six, enter your email address in the email address field to receive a receipt of your transaction. Helpful tip, place a check mark in the save to my account checkbox to save your account information for future use. And step eight, click the submit button to confirm your payment or click the cancel button to cancel the payment. So let's take a live look at managing tuition and fees in JMC family. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna charge some payments to an account. So we, we have a balance to work with. So I'm gonna stick here with my demo account. I'm gonna charge, I'm gonna pick my student. Uh, we'll pick Francis and Francis gets kids camp fees. And then I'm going to pick Emily and Emily is going to get a tuition fee. All right, I'm, I'm going to apply those fees to their account. And I'm going to come here to JMC family. I'm going to click on tuition and fees. And I have an error on the page because I logged in too early. <laughs> so let me fix my error here. And I'm going to get that again. Okay. There we go. So now I can log in to JMC family. And I'm going to come to tuition and fees. And you can see that I have these, uh, the, the charges were applied 619. So these are the three charges. I'm sorry. The, the, this was the payment that we had earlier. Here are my charges. I've got my uh, tuition charge. I've got my kids camp charge. So I owe $5,010. Um, I can see the total balance for all of the kids in my family. So this uh, making those family fee charges, I, I think just organizes things and makes it a little bit easier for a family to manage everything they owe rather than clicking from student to student. But again, it's, it's totally your choice. You would choose what works best for your families and for your students. Um, if families want to purchase an item, they come to this purchase items. Um, they select the student who would want to make that purchase and I can add it to cart and I can see here what's in my cart. I would go to checkout if I wanted to purchase this, or I would go to close if I had changed my mind. I'm gonna close that for now because we'll look at how to uh, purchase an item and just, or I shouldn't say purchase an item, I should say pay a bill, pay online in just one moment. Um, but while I'm on the screen, a couple of things that I wanna point out is that you do have this export to a spreadsheet button, um, and then you also have export to PDF. So if a parent's like, you know, I need my bill, Hey, you know what? You can log into JMC Family. You can export it to a spreadsheet. You can get a PDF and you can print your bill right there, or you can just view all your fees here online. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, and I just realized I hadn't maximized my screen. I'll do that right now. Um, you can manage your payment methods. So this is where you would have those saved accounts, which I don't have any in this, uh, in this demo database. I'm going to come back to my fees. Um, but you can manage recurring payments. So when we looked at setting up those auto fees, this is where families can decide how they would want to break down larger fees into smaller increments. So I'm going to enable auto payments. And you can see here, this tuition fee has been set up to um, 
to manage with recurring payments. So a family would choose pay off the balance within how many months? Well, maybe they're allowed to pay throughout the school year. So they wanna pay it off over nine months. Deposit day of the, of the month, well, they are choosing maybe the 15th works best for them, associated with which fee, tuition. And this is the great part, is JMC does the math for you. So if you are paying off $5,000 over nine months, each of your payments is gonna be $555.56. So they would pick their payment method. If it's a new account, enter in that information. Uh, if you're using a saved account, then that would show up there. But I don't have any saved accounts, we looked at that. So credit card information I would add here, or if I want it to um, come out of a bank account, I click the bank account tab and enter my account and routing numbers here. So that's how families would set up those recurring payments. I am gonna come back to my fees page here, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like then when they go to pay their bill. It looks just like how we were setting up those uh, recurring payments. So I would click pay my bill, balance or fee. Well, we're gonna go to fee. Uh, and, and I think, and Jody, I might be wrong on this, um, but I think that schools can decide if they want to disable the balance option. Because if, if schools just want it to be by fees, I think that it can limit it so that families can only pay by fees. But I think I would have to double check on that one. Okay, so I'm going to pay a fee. I'm going to pay for kids camp. I owe $10. So I, I see the selected total here is $10 and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. But again, families get instructions here. If they wanted to pay more than one fee at a time, they could go, do control or command and click more than one fee. I'm going to click OK. And then this is where that information pops up for me to be able to make an online payment. So the amount is right there. If I want to have a new or a saved account to pay it, fill out my first and last name and again, if it's credit card, uh, a credit card payment, put in that credit card information or bank account information. Uh, you do need to enter an email address. And then if you wanna save your payment, that, that, uh, that payment information, you can click save to my account and then you would be able to manage those payment methods. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of that. Do we have any questions about managing your tuition and fees through JMC Family? We have no questions. Okay. All right, then we're just gonna take a, a moment here to talk about running reports in the tuition and fees module. JMC's tuition and fees reports are designed to facilitate your office in maintaining accurate records of charges levied, payments received, and outstanding balances. These reports provide a detailed breakdown of payments and charges for each fee category designated by your school. With the aid of these reports, your office will have reliable references for bookkeeping, along with the ability to review balances due and payments made. Discover a multitude of customizable reports in JMC Office under the section Tuition and Fees Reports. Um, so for this, we're actually just going to go right into a live look, and I'm going to show you some of these reports. All right, so we're going to head over to JMC Office. And again, from our homepage, we go to Tuition and Fees. This time, instead of selecting data, we're going to come to reports, and you can see all of the reports we have. Uh, so one of the most common ones is just print statements, and I need to log into the district. <laughs> okay, so from the district level, uh, reports, print statements. So is it going to be you know, student and family or organization? So we'll leave this here. Grades, if you want to just print balances for everyone in the school, um, this is something I would do at the beginning of the year. Uh, when we would have everybody's charges ready for ready to go uh, at our back to school night, everyone would get a copy of their invoice. From that point on, we expected them to go to JMC family to manage their accounts, but we wanted them to know what they were getting into at the start of the school year. So we could just print everyone's statements. Um, so you can select the whole school. You can limit it down to a particular grade. Uh, you can include balances. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, include accounts with balances or all accounts. That's what we would do at the beginning of the school year. Uh, if you wanna look at uh, accounts that have non-zero balances or negative amounts, or if you just wanted to print for a random family, you could select a particular student's name here and then just view their account. So let's see here. So here, I know that this student would have some charges. Uh, I can, sort my list by name. So if I am doing the entire grade, 
um, then I could, uh, I could sort it by name. I could sort them by grade and then student name, grade or contact name. So you have some options here for how you wanna print out those statements. You can go right here and click this email if possible. And then rather than printing it, it's just gonna email all those statements to the family. So this is another option. If you, don't, if you wanna save the paper, go ahead and email it. Um, and then this fee statement message, uh, if you were emailing it, it would, whatever your message is here, it applies to everyone's bill. So that message will go on, on every person's invoice. Um, so you can, this would let you save that uh, fee statement message. And then once you click print, it will print out the statement or go ahead and email out the statement. If you're emailing it to families, um, you've got your fee balance sheet. So you can look at students that include balances. If they have a minimum balance of uh, you know, $10, I'm going to go ahead and preview. And it shows me the family that, you know, owes some money here. And we knew that because we just charged that family. So this is a way to see um, fee balances. You have fee summaries, um, payment check, fees charged. I'm going to just maybe highlight some of the more popular ones. So like I said, print statements, that's one you'll use a lot. Fee list, you can take a look at, um, let's see here, I'll go to 10th grade biology, the date that it may have been charged. I'm going to hit preview. I have no data. Um, when it comes to fee payments, this one is one that I actually used a lot and actually fee account payments I used even more. So I'm going to come to fee account payments. I'm going to start there. So those fee accounts that we set up, the way that we grouped those fees together, if I wanted to look at... Um, all of my club fees are my registration fees. This is a report that I would run for the business office frequently. Um, I'm gonna leave this at all for now. Uh, I, I will look at the, um, the payments that have been made from a certain date. So I would often run this every other week or maybe every Friday, and it would allow me to share with the business office all of the payments that came in for a specified time. So that would just help her with those deposits. So I'm gonna preview this and I can see fee accounts paid, arts fee, payment total, $25 for art fees. So it breaks down the payments that are coming in and, and it groups them in those, um, in those uh, fee accounts. So that would just make things really easy for my business office. At the bottom, I can see uh, there was total payment, a uh, check payment of $50, overall total deposit $50, but I can see how those payments break down. Um, and then you can have fee payments, which breaks it down a little bit further. So the accounts, those larger groupings, and then fees, the individual fees. So just a few reports there that I'm highlighting. Um, there's a few more that you can dig into if you want to, but those are some of the more popular ones that you can use that would be really useful for your business office. Um, but if there are any reports anyone else wants to see, if they want to put that in the chat feature, uh, we could we could check it out. But does anybody have any questions right now about fee reports? We have no questions yet. Let's see if anybody responds to your question. Sounds good. I will um, talk to us about some calendar events coming up, uh, what to expect. And then if anyone's got any questions, we'll make sure we check before we sign out of this webinar. All right, so we'll look at JMC News and upcoming events. Next week, we've got three webinars starting on the 25th. We have the MCCC EdFi work session. So if you attended the training session last week, next week you can come for that work session, bring any questions you have about MCCC EdFi reporting. Then we are doing a back to school online registration work session. So again, come to that work session if you have questions about how to set up your online registration. And on the 27th, navigating the message center. First week of July, onboarding your new staff, how to get how to best get your new office users and teachers set up to speed in JMZ uh, on January 10th, managing contacts and January. My goodness, where's my mind? July. Oh, not go that way, Rachel. <laughs> July 17th, handling students entering or leaving your school, utilizing proper ad drop re-enter procedures. Uh, we've got our summer kickoff conference. 
So yesterday we had a huge success in Minnesota at the Plymouth uh, Community Center. And like I said at the beginning of our webinar, tomorrow we are going to be in uh, in Ankeny. So it's not too late. If you are in Iowa school, head to the conference. Um, we'd love to see you there. Um, and then we've got our back to school online registration work session, like I was just talking about. So if you missed any part of our back to school series, you can tune into this webinar for a full walkthrough of online registration from setup to e-signatures and tracking submissions, ensuring every student is good to go for the year. So go ahead and sign up for that webinar today if you'd like to attend that work session. And if you want to experiment with grading practices or scheduling without dirtying up your live data, you can enter the JMC Sandbox, which is an interactive replica of your school site where you can safely play with JMC tools. So if you want to learn a little bit more, you can click on that link once you have the PDF slides sent to you in just a few minutes. Uh, coming soon, your ticket to streamlining event admission with the gate portal office staff can set eligibility requirements within JMC, allowing ticket takers to see who's allowed into the event with the, the gate app. Uh, before launch, we'd love to partner with a JMC school to make gate great. Is that you? Uh, you can email training at jmcinc.com to be considered. And I think we're about to wrap up. So we'll take one more second here. Jody, did we have any questions pop up about reports that people might wanna look at? We do not have any questions. Okay. Well then on behalf of myself and Jody and all of us here at JMC, thank you for attending this webinar and thank you for choosing JMC.